countdown to economic collapse. There's $2.5 trillion at risk in the money markets, with financial uncertainty and credit default swaps occurring. Spain is in trouble. $1 trillion in student loan debt defaulting. We are approaching a fiscal cliff. This is Countdown to Economic Collapse, September 30th, 2012. I'm David John Sponheim, running for president under America's Third Party. The real economy is showing weaknesses. The overall jobs report will not keep up with the inflation rate. The retail spending seems to be dipping, although August showed a little bit of hope. But instead, Barack Obama and the cronies that got him there essentially wrote a blank check to all the banks. And the banks took that money, the TARP money, and didn't create jobs with it, didn't invest in regional profit centers. Instead, they padded their own pockets, and now here we are rolling forward with a fiscal cliff coming in December, and many people are getting skittish. Tim Geithner, for one, is preparing to leave the post of Treasury Secretary if Barack Obama wins. According to the LA Times, Treasury Secretary Geithner reaffirms he won't stay if Obama wins. So what does Tim Geithner know that we don't know? The people who run the country's monetary system are running the political system. I'm going to bring up a term, and I want you to look it up on Google, and that term is the Exchange Stabilization Fund. That fund is located in the Treasury. That fund operates everything that goes on within this country. What is happening is that fund, when it was first created in the 30s, has only one person in the country that can oversee it, and that is the President. So it's in that fund's best interest to continually recycle puppet presidents that can't look too deep into the exchange stabilization fund. And it won't matter who gets elected, Mitt Romney or Barack Obama, because the people that are behind the monetary changes in our country, they are going to pick whoever they want to win. It doesn't really matter what your vote is in this particular election. It really boils down to Tweedledee or Tweedledum. Either one is a puppet who will do the bidding of the very people that are controlling our monetary system. Now, I'm not one of those people. I'm an independent. I'm a third-party candidate that wants to, to get this country back on the right track with innovations, job creation, helping the private sector flourish, building small businesses. All of these ideas can only happen if you have a dynamic leader who knows how to lead, not just read off a teleprompter like Mitt Romney and Barack Obama do. I am the authentic, real deal. Now, I come to you every week talking about the problems that are fomenting in our country, going deep into investigations on the Internet, finding out more information for you, and we're going to bring some of that information for you right now, especially the info that just came out with the release of a new book by one of the lead regulators in our economy. in constant communication with Vikram Kamen throughout that whole process. And I felt like he and Vikram were figuring out what they were going to do and then, and then trying to, to jam it on me. Uh, I, I do feel that. So I, I do think um, that uh, a lot of the policy decisions that were made were made through the prism of what Citigroup needed. And it did, uh, that's not to excuse the rest of the industry, they all made mistakes. So they, all, they all have weaknesses, they all uh, should have been held to account in varying degrees. But uh, I do think, you know, especially the capital injections, forcing capital into all those banks, and most of them did not need it. Uh, that was really, I think, what pe got people more angry than anything, because that was taxpayer money going into those very large financial institutions. You're talking and about TARP now. I'm talking about TARP. And it, it, it uh, worked horrible reputational damage on everyone. Uh, the money market fund guarantee, uh, he also blocked regulation early on. I mean, there's, there's really, you call him the... The bailout or in chief you know, at one he, point. He was. I mean, he was by far uh, the most generous uh, in wanting to, for every solution, throw money at the problem and, and don't exact much in return. I, I absolutely think that much more so than Ben and Hank. And again, I think it. it ref again, I think he was doing what he thought was right, but he viewed uh, these institutions as, en as entities that need to be taken care of, and that this was just a, a big you know, a systemic event, uh, and we needed to protect them, whereas I wanted them to have accountability. They had, they had caused this. <laughs> and uh, I think that was, uh, again, reflective of the philosophical disagreement. If you view the, the banks themselves as victims, so just of a larger, you know, crisis, uh, then you're going to just try to help them however you can. Uh, and I think that was his, uh, his, his guiding philosophy. 
if you viewed the banks as uh, culpable, and some much more culpable than others, that you wanted to inflict uh, pain on them and the people who had funded them uh, leading up to the crisis. And, uh, so now you see, we've been up to some very strange things, bailing out Citigroup when we should have focused on letting the banks rest on their own problems and find out where their own problems are. Shielding companies that are too big to fail has led us down this road to ruin. We're now giving out $40 billion a month with QE3, the thing that Ben Bernanke has instigated. This quantitative easing three is a band-aid operation which is going to further drain the equity of this great nation. We cannot allow our national debt to be enlarged and this reckless spending to continue. We've got to find the sources of the waste, cut the abuse, stop the corruption, and get this country back on track. But it's not going to happen with some crony from the banking community, like Mitt Romney, or some bought-off puppet who's now a multimillionaire, Barack Obama. It's going to come from a person who understands the plight of the American people. Now, we just took a cross-country trip of 9,000 miles, seeing firsthand what this country's going through. And I can tell you, we are in not in good shape. It may look great with all the new cars people are driving, but most of them are bought on credit. Our country is in a situation that only a keen eye can really understand. You see people digging deep into their bank accounts to, to finance their personal financial crisis. The amount of student debt is over $1 trillion, greater than the amount of credit card debt in our country right now. And the default rate is 13.4% on that student debt. That's another crisis that's looming. The mortgage crisis is not over yet. With the profits dropping in all the houses around the nation, people who own homes are taking a huge loss in the amount of money they had invested in their home. They're bearing the brunt of this incredible inflation of the economy with the printing of money by the Federal Reserve. We can't possibly bear the burden of a larger debt. We cannot possibly meet the minimum interest payment on that debt with our tax money. More and more people are paying less taxes. It's, there's a reason. They aren't making any money. When Mitt Romney makes fun of that 47% in his speech in front of $50,000 plate dinners, we cannot allow a president who's that out of touch with reality to get elected. And we can't allow a person like Barack Obama to continue his reign of nonsense, of stepping in front of legislation instead of working with it and finessing it and making compromises with the Republicans. Our future is highly dependent on the group that we call our leaders. And currently they are incompetent. They are bought off. And I think you know that. The approval rating for Congress is all-time low, 13%. That's something that's never happened in a pre-election year. Congress closed their doors early. They didn't want to deal with problems like the U.S. Post Office going bankrupt or the farm subsidy proposals that are going out there. They wanted to suspend that discussion till after the election. We have a chance to actually talk about these issues before the real crisis hits as we approach 2013. Now, the fiscal cliff is coming. Our nation is not doing the right things it needs to do to consolidate its base. We need to cut the military budget by $300 billion per year. That's half of what we're currently spending. We need to cut the amount of spending for non-U.S. citizens for social welfare programs to approximately $300 billion less than we currently are spending. You see, non-U.S. citizens are collecting a tremendous amount of benefits from taxpayers in this country. People with green cards are collecting Section 8 housing, food stamps, welfare, Social Security, and we can't afford that. We anticipate a $300 billion savings there per year. And if we no longer extend unemployment insurance from 99 weeks, but instead 16 weeks, we'll see a huge savings there of close to $600 billion over the four-year period. That's huge. And that will lead to a $3 trillion savings over four years. That's what I propose at America's Third Party. You can take that and talk about it among your friends and discuss what a third party would do for you as a citizen, for your ability to change your nation. As a president representing the American people, centrists, we can begin to pull those two factions into the center and guide this nation toward a better future. We can begin to mold a plan that will create products that we can export overseas, that other nations will love, that will clean the environment. I will spearhead a program to make our nation energy efficient within four years, creating 
automobiles that get 100 miles per gallon and plug in the wall and cost less than $15,000. These are ideas that the two parties don't have. We've got a, a tough policy on immigration. We want to give people a chance to become a U.S. citizen within a short period of time as opposed to what we have now. We call that the Fast Track Naturalization Program and we started that idea back in 2008. And we've got an idea to essentially shore up our borders by bringing our troops home from overseas and having them stationed at the border of Mexico and Canada. Folks, we have to start thinking out of the box. And if you've been thinking like a Democrat for 30, 40 years like I was, or a Republican, you're probably at the point where you realize those two parties are bought off. They are owned and operated by foreign multinational interests that funnel money through super PACs. I'm not making any of this up. This really is going on in our country right now. So if you're watching this, this video from the comfort of your home on the internet, you're wondering, well, why isn't this guy in the mainstream media? Because they don't want me there. We've sent many press releases out and none of them have been returned with any favorable status and we get basically stonewalled by all the media, radio, TV, and print. They don't want to hear anyone who can ruffle the feathers of the existing status quo. But that's exactly what we need done right now. We need a person to step up and create a dialogue that is completely different than what you're hearing today from the 30 or so people you see every day on TV. I am absolutely certain that our economy can turn around, but we need a president who will lead, not a liar who reads off a teleprompter. I'm David John Sponheim, and I support this message. The Republicans and Democrats are afraid to bite the bullet. They want a padded, cush economy with plenty of borrowed money headed your way. And when you get the collapse delivered to you at the front door, it will come with no services, fuel shortages, no postal delivery, the possibility of, of, of panic in the streets, marauders coming through your neighborhood without any police support. That's the financial collapse that's coming. And that's not something I ever want for our nation. So let's get on board a third party now before it's too late, folks. Urge your friends and family to write my name in during this upcoming election. Make a statement about your vote. Because I, I believe in this election, our vote is meaningless. And I'm not saying a vote for me is meaningless. I'm saying a vote for anyone at this point is veritably meaningless because they've rigged the system.